Hello everyone, it's Roman from Natively and it's a third part of our tutorials on how to set up and up purchases. In previous two videos we have created a revenue cat account and link our App Store Connect and Google Play with revenue cat. In this tutorial we will go through on how to set up and up purchases on our website by using Bubble plugin or JavaScript SDK. So let's switch to our Bubble project. I'm pretty sure this one will be useful also for any website. You just need to understand the logic and what we need to do. So in our, in our web page, we have a login button, few text things to display if user actually subscribed and when subscription is expiring. Also some text element for error and subscribe button. From the workflow side, uh, we have a login button. When user click on it, we need to set customer ID. Uh, for customer ID, I would recommend to use current user's unique identifier. If you are using JavaScript SDK, uh, you have natively purchases element. You need to create an instance of this object and call login function. After user successfully sign into your application and you link them with revenue cat user, we can switch to implementing subscribe button. So we have a subscribe button, which call the action purchase package. In purchase package, we need to provide the package ID. Package ID uh, is the value which you can find in revenue cat dashboard. If you will open your offerings and an offering, as you remember from previous video, we have created a default package. So we click on it and then click one more time. And on the top, you can see the identifier. So this identifier is, uh, will work for both iOS and Android. So if you will buy a subscription, for example, from iOS device, uh, it will uh, buy the actual subscription from App Store Connect that you have created. And the same for Android. It will buy the natively subscription that we have created before. You can also integrate Stripe to this chain. So you can make like cross-platform subscription on web, Android and iOS. You can check more details about how to integrate Stripe in our documentation at the bottom. Here is it. Let's switch back to our web application. You need to insert this package ID here. So after user successfully purchased our subscription, we need to make sure that everything is good uh, by calling the revenue cat verify subscription action. I have created a custom event here and added this action right here. As an argument, you need to provide the entitlement ID it can be found in your revenue cat dashboard entitlements and entitlements identifier so after that uh, revenue cat verify subscription returns a few uh, values in our case we need is active and also we want to show the expiration date Let's see how it will work on a real device. So we have our purchases app installed. Let's run it. Now first, what we need to do is to sign in. So as you can see, my user is not subscribed and we are getting an error entitlement or user not found. So it means that on the page load, we are actually calling check subscription which return us an error that this user is not exist in revenue cat. The revenue cat users will be created the moment of purchasing a subscription. Let's purchase one. And as you can see, uh, our user is subscribed now. And you have noted that I'm using a sandbox account 
to do that, you need to uh, check the testing section in our documentation. So it's explaining how to create test users for Android and for iOS. So I think uh, with Bubble it was clear. Let's check how our JavaScript SDK looks like. In JavaScript SDK, you need to create a new instance of object natively purchases and then call login and provide the user ID as we did before uh, for Bubble. Also, we have a logout in case if you need to uh, reset the customer ID or your application support uh, multiple users on one device. You can get current user customer ID. It's very useful uh, in a case when you are not linking the user with a revenue cat by calling purchases customer ID function. And to make a purchase, just call purchase package, provide the package ID and a callback and you will receive a response with a status transaction ID or error. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time.